Jason Galbraith. So I'm the one speaking, but um, Katie, who's over here, uh, is my coworker. That uh, the two of us have kind of like become the brain trust at Sunset to make these things happen. So most of this stuff, like I didn't necessarily come up with this on my own. Like we are really trying to grow the program and have now a third coworker. And as John said, that seems amazing until you're like, oh, except compared to like Big Math Group. So <laughs> this is my tenth year of teaching. I feel that old. Um, so my background is a uh, master's in artificial intelligence, but I found out that teaching humans to think like computers was actually the more fun way to go. Um, so I wanted to give you, it seems like a successful program at Sunset. So we offer all of these classes here. So we have a computer science pathway that has hardware, robotics, game design, web design. We have an intro class for people that don't know what they want to do so they can get a taste of everything. We offer um, 12 credits of um, uh, dual credit through PSU uh, in the computer science. Uh, we have a software design class. We're just recently getting into engineering. So we got a big CTU revitalization grant, and now we're offering a CAD electronics, mechatronics engineering design pathway. So we have all of these classes, and it seems amazing, but I want to make sure that you have a healthy dose of the reality that goes behind that. So um, all of these are electives. So that means that I spend an awful lot of my time marketing, um, trying to make sure that these kids don't take business, they take my class. They don't take art, they, don't, they take my class. And I feel horrible about that because like, I want them to be well-rounded people. But the truth is, like, I'm having to like, make sure that my program exists. Um, I'm constantly dealing with a lack of resources. I have classes of, I've had a class of 53, and I wasn't the largest class in the school. And we're going through budget accounts again this next year. Um, I'm constantly writing grants constantly writing grants and trying to get enough equipment in and getting things into the classroom that are useful for the kids. I use all open source software so the kids can take it home and use it whenever they want. Because if you, well, the interface may not be as pretty, you could still have access to all of the sort, same sorts of things that you could with something that costs a lot of money. In order to run all these classes, I'm running multiple sections at the same time. So Robotics 1 and 2 will get mixed together, which actually it seems crazy from a person who lectures all the time, but we run project-based classes. All of my lecture materials are online, all the resources are there, and I'm actually just facilitating that they keep working, and if there are roadblocks, I help remove those. And so it allows me to kind of like clone myself, is what I've called it, is like, I'm online, you can go find me there, or I'm online over there, and then I'm here to help you solve problems. And so it allows me to run a section of 12 in software engineering that would never for a fly but a section of 12 in C++ and within computer engineering and mix them with some computer game design too. Now we have critical mass and I can offer a class and make sure that the kids have access to the skills they need. Um, just like uh, John is shielding us from district decisions, I'm constantly shielding kids from district decisions as far as like grading and requirements and whatnot. So that's a big part of my day. Um, a lot of people assume that kids know how to do programming just because they are on their phones all the time, right? The fact is that they're very good at consuming data, but they're not good at creating it. They don't actually know how it works. I cannot tell you how many times in my advanced programming classes I have to teach kids how to save files and what those are and where they go. Um, and so that assumption is a myth. Like that, let's just take that. And now, once you go beyond that, now you can start saying, okay, how does a computer work? How do these things work? Um, what is privacy? Uh, what is computer access? All of these sorts of things. I spend a lot of time. Um, running clubs, going to competitions, teaching workshops, uh, educating administrators, speaking occasionally. Um, and none of that's paid for. Like, I spend a lot of hours doing that. But the fact of the matter is, if I was motivated by money, I wouldn't be a teacher in the first place. So I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, I serve a lot of masters, so I'm trying to get kids into four year higher education. I have kids who go to MIT, at Harvard, and all those. I have a career pathway that takes kids into PCC and directly into associates and a job. I have kids that only come to school on the days I teach robotics and wouldn't graduate if I didn't offer my classes. I have special education kids that can't actually function normally in a classroom, and I have to take wherever they're at and try and get as far as I can with what I have. Um, I am trying to meet all of those masters in the same classroom. It's a tricky thing. So after all of that, it may sound really depressing, but 
the reason that I left teaching in college was the kids teaching in college, you're just kind of feeding them information. You're not really changing their lives. In high school, you can change their lives fundamentally for the better. Um, so rather than me just saying like the things that I've done, uh, what I wanted to do was show um, a couple of interviews. Uh, so there's um, one of the uh, things that I've done in the past is I've actually went to my alumni. I went through LinkedIn and basically tried to find all of my alumni and said, hey, make a five minute video. Tell me what the value of high school is and be honest. <laughs> and um, I actually got a really big response for that. Um, so if you are, go to Sunset High School, SHS Galbraith, Sunset High School Galbraith, this is all online and you're totally welcome to look at it. And we got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of responses. And it's very, it's very, which I think is valuable. You have kids that um, maybe weren't the best. Maybe kids that didn't go into computer science, went into business. We have kids, we have a kid that didn't actually go to college. He went and did his own startup right from the beginning. Uh, we have someone who became a pilot. We have someone who went into business. Um, we have people that didn't speak English when they came in. We have a variety of different things. Game developers. Someone who's going to get her PhD in nanoparticles. So like someone working on the Watson IDM project. But all of them have this sort of sense that computer science was one of those foundations that really got them to where they are now. And that's one of the kind of valuable touchstones. Other pieces come in, come and go. Some people love IB, some people hated it, some people thought writing was the best thing, some people thought math was foundational. But they all have, like, it taught me how to think, how to take this fluffy thing in my head and make it a real thing. Whether that's in software or in engineering where you're making a physical object. So another project I did was um, I filmed my seniors and say, okay, make a case for why computer science is important. And then I use those videos a lot. So I wanted to show briefly, like, one of the ones that is the three minute administrator bite sized piece, which has to do with how has it changed your life? Let's see if technology actually works. I never trust it. I think that it completely gave me a direction in my high school career. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do until I was in robotics too, and then I found that I really enjoyed solving puzzles and going through the process of the design and finally like completing a challenge. And it gave me an idea of a field where I can continue to do that for the rest of my life and still be surprised by new stuff, but know how to handle each challenge as a game. Before I actually ventured into any of the classes that Sunset's technology had had, I had no idea what I wanted to do after high school. It was totally just this blank space. And being in computer science there has really opened a lot of doors for me, both in school and out of school, in terms of career opportunities, awards, etc. And it's really just been an amazing experience. And I know for sure what I want to do now. So there's that. Once I see a problem, I don't just immediately flip to the back of the book for the answer. Instead, I have to peruse uh, forums, and I have to go through the API. I have to ask my friends how to fix the problem. And eventually, it's this really large trial and error process in which I find out why a problem exists and how to fix it, rather than what the solution is. And I think that's really important because it's helped me in all my other classes. Obviously, computer skills, but a lot of it is not really involved with the computer skill-wise. Um, like a paper creating, it's it's thinking outside the box, it's creativity, it's um, it's almost like learning about yourself. Um, it's being able to work with other people, um, like team, team members. Ask me if you want to do one or do them, and how one little logic gap can bring bring down a whole computer program or a whole, whole argument. I just I think I'm a much more um, I'd say logically creative, if that makes any sense, thinker. So it's like, I feel like I make a better Spock, but I also make a better Scotty after. <laughs> <laughs> For all you younger people, that's a TV show from the <laughs> So that's 
why I teach what I do. Like, I've made an impact on all those lives, and they're willing to come back and make videos of themselves, which is a very, like, self-conscious thing to do. And you'll find a lot of these in my alumni interviews as well, trying to help out the next generation. So, thank you. Thank you.